Hello, I'm Professor Shane Dark of the National Drug and Alcohol Research Centre at the University of New South Wales and welcome to our lecture series on drugs in the body. The lecture that we will be going through on this occasion concerns nicotine and tobacco. Why are these separate? Well, tobacco and nicotine aren't synonymous and while tobacco contains nicotine, there are other products uh, that nicotine is the component of that are, are not tobacco. Before we move on to looking at the effects upon the body, we should basically examine what are the forms that nicotine can be seen in and what nicotine is itself. Nicotine is the main psychoactive component of tobacco and related products. That is, it is nicotine that causes the effects that are sought after. Uh, in tobacco, there are many other chemicals, but it is nicotine that is the primary uh, driver of the effects that are sought for, for this drug. It's a stimulant, which we'll come back to when we look at its effects upon uh, the body. It's predominantly smoked, uh, and certainly since the beginning of the 20th century, when we saw the introduction of uh, ready tailor-made cigarettes, uh, this was the case. Uh, in earlier centuries, it was in many cases to be snorted, uh, that is in the form of snuff, which was ingested up the nose. It can also be chewed, as in chewing tobacco, placed as a wad in the cheek, which is uh, called snus and is very popular in uh, Sweden. There are, of course, a range, and this has occurred since the 1990s, of nicotine replacement therapies that are available on the market to deal with nicotine dependence. These come in the forms of either uh, patches, lozenges, nicotine gums, and indeed oral sprays or oral strips in recent years. Uh, these are not generally recreational substances. What they are used is to replace uh, nicotine in the blood. So if someone's ceasing or tra attempting to cease smoking, it is the nicotine withdrawal which uh, is, is driving the continuation of smoking. The idea is to replace nicotine in the blood. A similar uh, thing to opioid substitution therapy for opioid dependence, where another opioid is used in, instead of a drug, drug such as heroin. And of course, in recent years, and I'm sure many viewers will be well aware, e-cigarettes have risen in prominence. Uh, these are, again, smokeless products that vaporise nicotine concentrate, which is inhaled, and this is known as vaping. At the time of these lectures being conducted in 2022, uh, the long-term consequences of uh, these products are unknown and their relationship to people moving into actual smoking are currently unknown. I should emphasise that one of the reasons we've had so much resources put into reducing uh, smoking and, and treating the effects of, of, of nicotine dependence is that it is such a potent drug. It's highly reinforcing. Uh, it's the most, uh, has the highest depend dependence potential of any of the psychoactive substances. It causes highly reinforcing immediate spikes in nicotine plasma concentrations. And thus there is high dependence and a withdrawal syndrome which generates that dependent behavior. And uh, continues the, uh, the smoking behaviour. There is a substantial burden of disease associated with nicotine dependence and with smoking in particular. I should point out that not all of the effects are associated with smoking, but smoking as a route of administration has serious health effects. Firstly, mortality we, at the sharp end, shall we say, of the health effects Cigarette smokers have elevated mortality rates, generally manifested later in life because what we're looking at are heart and lung disease that manifest in later life. So it's the long-term effects. 
So it's long-term morbidity that is uh, primarily uh, driving this mortality. Indeed, amongst the older age groups, so people over the age of 50, uh, tobacco is associated with an all-cause mortality approximately three times that of non-smokers. And it's estimated that smokers have 10 years of potential life lost if their smoking does not uh, cease. Smoking cessation by the age of 40 cuts the years of life lost by 90% and ceasing by 60 by 40%. So there is good evidence that uh, smoking cessation will reduce the long-term mortality of smokers. But if people continue to smoke, there is no question that the mortality rates are elevated and there is substantial uh, loss of quality of life and potential years of life lost. This risk comes from a wide range of factors such as cancers, uh, emphysema, heart disease and stroke. Chewing tobacco as opposed to smoking uh, increases the risk of oral, esophageal and pancreatic cancer as causes of death. So all in all there is no question that long-term smoking causes morbidity and mortality that is clinically significant and significant from a public health perspective as well. Let's now explore the effects of COD, the body of nicotine and tobacco. As I have said, it has substantial effects and these relate to long-term morbidity and mortality. Firstly, let us explore the heart. The acute effects of nicotine upon the heart are it raises blood pressure, accelerates the heart rate, can cause arrhythmias and irregular heart rate, and can cause vasoconstriction, that is constriction of the vessels carrying blood in the body. So there are a range of acute effects of nicotine upon the heart, but these have long-term implications. The major chronic effects of nicotine or regular smoking upon the heart are coronary artery disease, that is clogging of the coronary arteries, reducing the amount of blood getting through to the heart and thus the amount of oxygen getting through to the heart and being pumped through. This puts strain upon the heart to, as it's attempting to pump blood through narrower arteries. It can also cause abdominal aortic atherosclerosis, that is the atherosclerotic disease, uh, coronary artery disease as, as such, narrowing of the aorta in the abdominal region. This is one of the major uh, vessels of blood to the heart. Long-term effects of all these sorts of things include ischemic heart disease, that is, a, as I've said, there's less blood uh, and oxygen coming through to the heart, which is a muscle it's working harder to pump, this can cause uh, the loss of oxygen to the heart, which can cause scarring of the heart and reduce its, its pumping efficiency. Related to this, hypertensive heart disease, I said that uh, nicotine causes spikes in, hy in hypertension in blood pressure. This puts pressure upon the coronary arteries, uh, which can cause the atherosclerosis, so the narrowing of arteries I've spoken of, and can in, uh, cause enlargement of the heart and reduce pumping efficiency. And it can cause peripheral artery disease, peripheral, neuro peripheral neuropathy, uh, so loss of circulation to the extremities, which can have major clinical implications. One of the major organ systems that nicotine and tobacco affect is the heart. The other major system are the lungs. This should come as no surprise, of course, because as I have said, tobacco is commonly smoked and it's you know, ingesting a no large number of chemicals, of superheated chemicals into the lungs. So there's a range of diseases that we know are associated with smoking. And we've known this certainly since the early 60s when the Surgeon General's report came out in the United States, which I would 
actually advise anyone who's interested in this area to uh, look up. Firstly, asthma. Uh, it's not surprising. Uh, smoking exacerbates existing um, disease amongst asthmatics and can induce an attack. In terms of longer term effects, there's reduced lung capacity. Uh, there's an impairment of the medium and the uh, small airways. And this can eventually manifest in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that is uh, forms of emphysema. And smoking is the predominant cause of these diseases uh, in, in the uh, current era. And of course, everyone would be aware that the risk of lung cancer, this is beyond question. There's an increased uh, regis, uh, risk for in, uh, pulmonary tumours that it's directly related to smoking. Uh, there's no question about this. This is um, beyond doubt. People may be less aware of some other uh, areas. For instance, tuberculosis, not that smoking uh, carries tuberculosis per se, but it does increase the risk of people being susceptible to tuberculosis and the reactivation of latent disease. Uh, in a lot of uh, diseases of the respiratory system, smoking impairs the respiratory system and makes people more uh, vulnerable to various forms of infection. And that's true of things such as uh, influenza and pneumonia. So the overall pulmonary health of the regular smoker is, uh, is, is poor, or certainly poorer than the non-smoker. As uh, we looked at mortality, function can to some extent come back after um, ceasing smoking. It's one of the benefits, of course, uh, things like reduced lung capacity can be improved. But of course, long-term irreversible damage uh, is, is, is just as it says. So um, obviously tumours, etc., require major medical interventions. We've examined the effects of nicotine and tobacco upon the heart and upon the lungs. Nicotine and tobacco do, however, have effects upon other parts of the body. Firstly, the brain. Tobacco smoking is associated with a four times increased risk for stroke. Uh, we can see this as part of the broader cardiovascular uh, morbidity associated with smoking. Comes from a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, atherosclerosis, that is narrowing of uh, the vessels carrying blood, in this case to the brain. What this will cause is the possibility of an ischemic stroke, that is a blockage in vessels that causes loss, a loss of oxygen to parts of the brain with subsequent damage to those regions. There's also hypertension. I spoke previously about increased blood pressure, constant pressure upon uh, vessels within the brain can cause one of these vessels or more of these vessels to burst, causing a bleed directly into the brain, what was known as a hemorrhagic stroke. And also smoking increases cholesterol, which is in and of itself a risk factor for stroke. Now I should point out that smoking cessation reduces this risk. Uh, it goes back to what we were looking at earlier. Smoking cessation and the earlier smoking is ceased, the greater that we see the long-term health effects to the individual. I should point out that uh, secondhand smoke is also a problem. Uh, we see that, for instance, in people who uh, work in environments where there was a lot of smoke, uh, for instance in bars, and people are exposed to secondhand smoke, which is, increases their risk of various lungs, lung disease and heart disease, uh, but it increases the risk for stroke by something like uh, 30%. Now, in many environments around the world, in many jurisdictions, legislation has been introduced to stop this. 
uh, so that bars, for example, that people don't smoke in bars, so the bar staff aren't exposed to secondhand smoke. But it is a public health uh, message that your smoking doesn't only affect you. People may not be aware that smoking also has an effect upon the liver. It's a causal risk factor for liver cancer and it increases the risk by 70%. I think when we think of cancers with smoking, we tend to think of lung cancer and that is certainly true. But there are other factors uh, that nicotine and, and tobacco smoking uh, can actually be involved in, in, in diseases that we may not necessarily think of them as directly involved in. If you have someone who has alcoholic fatty liver disease, and don't forget that there's always been a strong association between smoking and drinking, if someone's through their use of alcohol developed uh, alcoholic liver disease, smoking can accelerate that towards cirrhosis. And for those with hepatitis C, and I'm thinking here primarily of injecting drug users, Again, smoking accelerates the rate of disease progression towards fibrosis that is scarring of the liver uh, in such people. Nicotine and tobacco also have effects upon the kidneys. This really relates to the cardiovascular effects that we've discussed earlier. So we may see hypertensive kidney disease uh, amongst regular smokers and this is the sort of disease thing we see, for instance, nephrosclerosis that is uh, damage to the, or reduced capacity for blood flow through the uh, vessels, the blood vessels within the kidneys. And it's actually, what we're seeing here is the systemic effect of the cardiovascular effects of uh, nicotine and smoking uh, upon the cardiovascular system more broadly. Before finishing, we'll briefly look at a range of other conditions that are associated with smoking. And again, that people may not readily be aware of. We've spoken of cancers, uh, and I should point out that the range of cancers that smoking increases the risk for is quite extensive. Uh, there's increased risk breast cancer, colorectal cancer, oral cancers in the mouth, uh, cancers of the larynx, the esophagus, and pancreatic cancer. So in terms of increased risk, or we talked about mortality, the range of um, cancers that can be associated with nicotine and tobacco is, is extensive and has real implications for uh, life quality and, and life expectancy. I think this needs to be borne in mind that we shouldn't only restrict our uh, linking in our head of smoking with lung cancer. Diabetes is a disease that tobacco smoking, nicotine use, increases the risk 30 to 40 percent. And this has real uh, implications for cardiovascular health, of which we spoke earlier. Eye disease. There's a three times risk of developing macular degeneration. Now, I'm sure that people wouldn't necessarily be aware of this, but uh, macular degeneration, of course, uh, is a serious condition, and we now know that it is strongly associated with tobacco smoking in terms of increased risk. Oral health. There's an increased risk for cavities amongst uh, regular smokers. It's a major risk factor for gum disease. And heavy smokers are at three times increased risk of tooth loss. And finally, something again that people probably aren't aware of is that there is an increased risk for rheumatoid arthritis amongst regular smokers. So all in all, I think we need to get away from just thinking of smoking and the lungs to looking at the broad range of effects across the bodily systems that 
this, uh, the, the, this uh, drug and its, its route of delivery does um, cause. In this lecture concerning nicotine and tobacco, we've covered a broad range of issues. For more detail, I would direct you to our recent book, The Pocket Guide to Drugs and Health. In this, we cover all of the issues raised in this lecture, and we look at all of the major drugs and all of the major organ systems. It's page at a glance, uh, dot point format, so that someone can look at, for instance, what are the effects of nicotine upon the heart, and it will be there in easily digestible form. Mm -hmm.